I like this. I feel like I don't feel the need to use both a contour and a bronzer whenever I use this. There is the eyeshadow. I think it looks really, really beautiful. However, wait, I think that the NYX ones may be less melty. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, then welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So make sure before you go to subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave any comments that you have for me down below. In this video, we are going to be testing out and playing around with some new makeup launches. I have a bunch of stuff here that I've either bought myself or received in PR and I have been wanting to sit down and play around with them. So I thought I would do that on camera with you guys and share with you my first thoughts. Now I do want to preface and let you guys know that my first thoughts are not going to be my concrete full final thoughts on these products. I just thought I would take you guys along this journey and let you see kind of like the behind the scenes of trying new products. So without further ado, if you guys are interested in seeing what I have here, then let's get started. First off, Verst sent me another PR package, including this headband. I'm in love with these headbands. I think that they are so fun. I definitely think they're ginormous um, and I probably wouldn't wear them out out, but when I'm doing my makeup and doing my skincare and stuff, they're so fun and I love this color. Ugh, I love them, okay. So this brand sent me this spray. It's the Dalva First Spray Serum. It has the white truffle in it. As you can see, it does have that biphasal type of formulation where the oil serum is on top and you just have to like shake it up. And so far, I think I really like it. It does have a slight scent to it and makes me a little nervous because I do have sensitive skin, but I did look at all the ingredients and it doesn't seem like there's anything in there that really irritates my skin. I like the glow it gives me and I think it preps the skin really nicely. I've done it where I put it on after I cleanse and also like right before makeup and I like it. Oh, before we get into the makeup, I did want to mention this brand. So this is Who is Elijah and it's kind of funny because my husband's real name is Elijah. He just goes by Judd and when I posted it on my Instagram story, everyone was like, it's your husband. Elijah is your husband. Very funny guys. Very funny. <laughs> they sent me like a discovery kit and two full-size fragrances and this one I spray it in here. So I talked about this in a previous video, how I've been looking for fragrances that are similar to Glossier U. This is giving me Glossier U vibes, like the way that it smells straight out of the bottle. I don't know if it smells exactly the same on my skin just yet. I'm gonna have to like test that out, but it smells really good on the skin. It has that really fresh kind of like, I want to say pink pepper scent to it. I don't know. Solar warm floral jasmine absolute ambergris ambroxan musk dry woody amber agarwood and moss i don't know what's in here that makes it similar to the glossier you scent but i'm really liking it so far and i've been testing it for a couple days i think i'll probably have final thoughts in like a week or so this is the refi lip buff this is not new from what i know and it has kind of this comb or bristle brush at the tip of it and the product dispenses from that hole in the middle and you just take this and you're supposed to be able to buff your lips just like exfoliating them except this is a physical exfoliator i like it because it does leave my lips really smooth but it also kind of hurts like these plastic bristles really have no give to them and they're super skinny. So the bristles are just very aggressive. Like it feels like it's scratching your lips. I'm still deciding how I feel about it. Because of how aggressive it feels, I kind of don't reach for it often. I already did a full video on these. These are the Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oils. This is in the shade Soft Mauve. I figured I would prep my lips with this because I already did a video. I do have a couple lip products to share with you guys, by the way. I like this shade in Soft Mauve because I feel like it's pretty natural. These feel so hydrating and smooth. I know on Sephora it sold out within a day. This is nothing new, but I'm gonna color correct with my Bobbi Brown Peach Corrector before we go in with the foundation. Mainly focusing this where I have pretty prominent acne scarring. So I received this kind of sample kit for this foundation. It's from Orsay Cosmetics. It is the Serum Foundation Experience Set. And they sent three different shades here, which I think is really cool. So this foundation honestly is pretty pricey. So having this available to you to where you can like test out a bunch of different shades is really great. I did their shade matching quiz and I did 
did it a couple times with different foundations because you input different foundation matches from different brands and my answers varied each time so I was like I don't know which one I am so they offered to send me this so I can test it out and see which one and I'm still trying to decide if I'm the shade 550 Celadon or 50W Nove. So one is a warm tone and the other one is an olive. And I almost feel like the warm tone is a little too warm and then I feel like the olive is a little too olive. I think I sit somewhere right between. So this is 550 and this is 50W. I've also tried to match it like to my neck and neither one is a perfect match. So I'm just trying to figure out which one is the closest match you know so here is the warm tone 50w and here is 55o as you can see they're both a little bit like a little bit off I've been debating this for like a week now and I still don't know like I feel kind of silly not knowing let's try 55o I want to see this on my skin I want to see how it wears from what I can tell this serum foundation is very serumy it's super lightweight in texture look at that look at it compared to the color corrector doesn't it look a little off but it feels really nice and lightweight it truly does feel like a little bit of a thicker skincare serum which i like i'm just using this bk beauty 101 brush it blends out really nicely too I do feel like it blends out a lot of the pigmentation though, so I do feel like I need to use a good amount of this. I'm not sure how much is equivalent to like a pump of this foundation. I can't really tell, but I would assume that the amount that I've been using recently would probably be equivalent to maybe one and a half pumps. I think the best thing about this foundation definitely is the lightweight feel of it. So I've done videos on both of these concealers already, so I'll link them down below if you guys are interested in seeing the full length videos but this is the Fenty Wear Even Concealer and the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Concealers. Both of them are really nice. They're also very different. This is definitely more hydrating while this one gives you kind of like a satin matte finish. I'm going to use both today. So I'm going to use the Fenty one in 300N on the spots on my face. I have this healing acne spot and it's very dry. I probably shouldn't put concealer straight on there since it is more dry but... <laughs> It's okay. I feel like that foundation is kind of like a light to medium coverage on me based on how much I used. I'm also gonna do my brows real quick while I let that kind of sit there and dry. I'm taking this BK Beauty and Nikki LaRose brush. It's the N14 and I'm gonna use this to buff out that concealer. I do feel like I get the best coverage from this concealer when I let it sit for at least a minute to dry down just a little bit before blending it out because it does have a lot of that hydrating property to it. And under the eyes, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier concealer in the shade 2W1. It does have more of that satin matte finish, like it's a satin natural finish. So it sits really well and it barely creases under the eyes. I definitely always set my under eyes, but with this, I don't have to put as much underneath the eyes. That's really bright. <laughs> so I'm going to add, I think 3N1, just so it blends a little better into the skin. That's a lot more than I wanted, but it's okay. This adds so much brightness to the face but it doesn't look too stark to me I don't know I'm not used to doing really bright under eyes and I feel like this gives me just the right amount of brightness to where it still looks pretty natural but it definitely adds like a glow to the center of the face someone asked me which one I like more between the Fenty and Laura Mercier one and honestly they're so different that I can't say one or the other. I definitely think Laura Mercier is great if you want that airbrush natural skin look, but Fenty is great if you want that extra hydration and you want something that'll continue to look very glowy and dewy on the skin even after you powder it down. They just have such different uses in my opinion. I think I want to take some of the 2WN and just use it to sculpt out the cheek. There you go. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that shade for that reason. Looks crazy, but trust the process. I don't think this product is new, but it is new to me. It's the Westman Atelier Contour Stick in the shade Truffle. I think they recently started to sell these in like the smaller ones, and I bought this at Sephora just on a whim because I had heard it was really good, and I have been playing around with it, and I do really like it. I'm just gonna take this on the back of my hand 
it's this really nice neutral contour shade i think it works very well it doesn't look too red or too orange or anything on the skin it's also not too dark where it looks muddy on my skin just taking this makeup by mario dual ended brush i like really like this shade as a shadow but it also kind of like doubles as an actual bronzer where it warms up the face i like this i feel like i don't feel the need to use both a contour and a bronzer whenever I use this. I do feel like I use a lot more though whenever I deposit it on the back of my hand. However, I do think it gives me the best blend whenever I do that with cream products, whether it be blush or bronzer. I just have a lot more control, you know? All right, so I think the bronzer is pretty much done for now. If we wanna touch it up later, then I will do that. Oh, you know what? No, actually I do want to contour my nose. I haven't done that in a hot minute. I thought that this would be a really good shade for that. So I have this Patrick Ta Contour 3 brush and I'm just gonna take this and use it, kind of like stamp it on before I blend it out. I don't know why I got out of the habit of contouring my nose. I did it for quite a while last year and then I just stopped and take it like, on the inner lid too because i feel like that adds a lot of dimension especially if you have sort of like a flatter face like i do obviously it looks more intense right now but i i'm pretty sure that whenever i powder the face it is gonna kind of tone itself down i did do a short form video on this on my instagram and tiktok but it is one of the new say do blushes in the shade cutie i love this shade i think it's so gorgeous now this is a water-based gel formula so it may not like go on as smooth as it could on top of this face because everything else that i've used so far has been silicone based i've done it before mixing silicone and water based products and it seems to work well we're just gonna hope for the best we'll see this color is perfect for my skin tone because it adds a little bit of warmth but it also gives you a really nice pinky peach flush i just love it and of course it is that perfect say do blush formulation it's the same formula what a beautiful flush oh my gosh and actually it went on to the rest of the complexion perfectly like i don't see any separation or anything like that it's working so well on top i'm so happy with this all right the complexion is doing pretty well so now i'm going to powder down the face and we're going to be using my oma trip and smooth powder again that's nothing new but on top of that we're going to be trying out the huda beauty peach pie loose setting powder i have been trying this out for about a week now and i did just get the mini because i have so many loose powders that i want to go through but i wanted to try this shade really badly so we're going to play around i'm just going to take this eyeshadow brush from bk beauty it's the Angie Hot and Flashy A503 and I'm gonna use this under the eyes because this powder makes my under eyes look flawless and for a while there I was noticing that the Huda Beauty one was just not sitting on my face the way that I wanted it to but the combination between this one and the Huda Beauty one gives me the perfect airbrushed finish and I've talked in length about the Huda Banana Bright loose setting powder and it's the same formulation but i did want to try the peach pie shade because i think the banana bread one currently is a little too dark for my complexion as i've gotten a little bit lighter during the winter time so when this peach pie shade came out i was like oh that's perfect it might just be exactly what i need right now and i do like the concept that this mini powder has where you kind of just take this off and then there's a sponge attached to the cap which in theory this is nice if you want to just tap it all over the face but it's hard to get the product on the actual sponge when it's a mini like this you know like it's fine on my forehead and stuff but when i want more precision when applying the powder i'm gonna use something like this so i'm just gonna take the cap of the oma beauty powder so here is the shade, here is peach pie. Let me get a little bit on my fingertip. And you guys can see it definitely still has that yellow tone to it, but it's a lot lighter than banana bread. Here is banana bread in comparison. So you can see banana bread and peach pie. And I think the peach in peach pie really helps to brighten my skin tone right now. So we're using this on this triangle puff and I'm gonna use this to bake under the eyes. On my skin tone, it almost looks like a light pinky peach shade. I thought that maybe it would wash me out, but honestly, I think it adds a lot of good brightness. Like it still gives some warmth to the skin. It doesn't wash me out completely, you know? Just gonna contour right there and then pat it on the forehead. This is a 
Kaleidos B1 blush brush and I'm gonna use this to wipe away the bake. Anywhere that we didn't bake, we're just going to dust the excess powder on top. So for instance, where my blush and my bronzer are, I'm just gonna use this to tap and buff on top of that because I don't wanna necessarily use a heavy hand of this powder on top because I don't want it to affect the color too much. But I still want the whole face to like blend in together. All right, there you go. Obviously, we still have a really like harsh line right here, but once we go on top with powder bronzer, it should kind of tone itself down. But that is what peach pie looks like on me. It just looks like a really nice brightening shade, but it also doesn't look like it's gonna give me a crazy white cast because of the tone of it, because it does have that yellowy peachy to it. Definitely looks like a more natural brightening shade. I did purchase around the same time, I did get the shade Pound Cake. It's actually right here. I also got a mini of this one and then they released Peach Pie and I was like, wait, I think Peach Pie is gonna work better. So here's Pound Cake and it's definitely a lot lighter and here's Peach Pie. You can clearly see that there's a lot more peachy tone in Peach Pie than Pound Cake. I kind of want to add more blush, but I think I'll do that towards the end and then I am gonna put some powder bronzer on, but again, I think I'm gonna do that at the end and let's move on actually to the eyes so i received this in pr this is from kaja beauty it's their new wink dazzle eyeshadow and glitter multi sticks you guys know i love a good crayon eyeshadow i love a good multi-purpose product so they came out with six different shades i think it's actually a pretty good shade range like you have your nice highlights you have a peach a mauve a pink and then a nice little bronzy shade but you guys know love my bronzy shades. I want to look at Mocha Sparkle because I want to use these all over the eyes. It did come with an insert, so let's read it. Two-in-one shadow stick and glitter stamp. Matte and shimmer eyeshadow formulas glide and blend effortlessly. Glitter stamp formula gives dazzling glam to eyes, under eyes, and face. Hmm. I wonder if I can use this without an eyeshadow primer. Okay, so this is the shade Mocha Sparkle. Let's do a little swatch. Ooh! That's pretty. That's a lot lighter than I anticipated. I think that's actually gonna be a really pretty all over lid color. Wait, I wanna see what the mauve one looks like too. Here is Mauve Mirage. Ooh, it's this grayish purple tone. Super pretty as well. Do you guys wanna see what the stamps look like? It's a twist top and then it kind of has a spring to it. A sponge applicator here. It looks like there's just a well of glitter in there. Should I twist it? I'm just kind of getting like a ring right here. Do you see that? A ring, not even on the tip of it. Oh, but that color is so pretty. Look at that. It's like a bluish purple shift. Those are my favorite type of like shifty duochrome colors. Ooh, maybe I gotta use that one. Let's see what the stamp looks like on Mocha Sparkle. Okay, so this looks like it's gonna be my everyday eyeshadow go-to type of look, you know? Can you see that? Not super intense. I'm gonna use the stick on Mocha Sparkle and then the stamp on Mauve Mirage. So it seems like it's gonna dry down, so I'm not gonna go in with an eyeshadow primer. I feel like a good eyeshadow stick doesn't need eyeshadow primer. So let's go in with this and I'm gonna do exactly what they say. I'm gonna blend it in and then blend it with my fingertip, I guess. Nice and creamy. Deposits good pigmentation, I think, but it's not too much. They kind of feel oily, like really, really creamy and a little bit oily. I hope this dries down. Wait, that's a really nice, very, very natural color. Okay, now we're taking the stamp from Mauve Mirage, there you go. I think I got a good amount. And I'm gonna just put this starting on the inside corner, going out. So it takes some work, but it's getting on there. Oof, that color. Okay, it's really sticking on there though. You definitely have to work with it. Like if you want the glitter, you have to go in with a tapping motion. But if you want it blended out and less glittery, then you you can do that with your fingertip. It's nice, it's a nice color, but I will say that this applicator is kind of difficult to work with. I want more, like I want more drama. I also feel like it's kind of just getting stuck on the sponge here. So I'm gonna wipe it off. All right, so wiping off the applicator with a paper towel and then going in with more and then pressing it in seems to be working. Like it's getting me a lot more pigmentation. Here you go, you see that? That's pretty. We're just gonna do the same thing on this eye. I think you also need to give the shadow stick a little drying time because I think that's what's making it stick to the sponge right here. I'm getting more whenever I kind of twist it and then I'm twisting the stick in the well 
Like you can see right there, I'm getting a little bit more. All right, so there is the eyeshadow. I think it looks really, really beautiful. However, it was definitely hard to work with. Make sure that you let the stick part kind of dry down a little bit before going in with the stamp. And then once you go in with the stamp, I think the best way to get product is probably to kind of like twist it in there as well as going in a circle like with this within the well because it's definitely hard to get a lot of product you have to go in a couple times i'm just gonna curl my lashes and then we'll be right back to do the lips i just finished the eyes and i added a little bit more of that say blush i also powdered with a little bit of my hula caramel bronzer now i'm just gonna go ahead and spray my face with the milk hydro grip setting spray i'm testing that setting spray out more because i kind of have been really liking the dewy look you know like i love my one size one to keep my makeup on all day and keep it matte but honestly the dewy look has just been my vibe lately so i've been playing around with that so now let's talk about a couple of different lip products that i've picked up so i definitely have more lip products than i can put on my lips at one time but the first new lip products i have are right here from anastasia they are called the lip velvets and i have the shades parchment and the shade peach amber i have kind of been playing around with these i haven't tried parchment on my lips just yet but i have tried peach amber and this is exactly what it says it's going to be it is a lip velvety color the reason i picked this up is because it reminds me so much of k-beauty and just asian beauty in general there's a brand i can't remember off the top of my head but it's called like a lip fudge blur tint i think and this reminded me of it and i wanted to try these out they have really rich pigmentation and it kind of gives you like a blurred lip effect i think it's really really beautiful definitely going to be a true velvet matte shade and also some lip products that i picked up up with the intentions to do a full video on them but when I like tried it out I don't know something like about them I didn't really like that much but they're the NYX oil slick clicks they're the shiny glossy bombs basically I bought six shades and from the ones that I have swatched so far they have like glitter or shimmer in them and I was really thrown off by that maybe it's just this one shade because the outside packaging does show that it has a little bit of like glitter on it and let me do some hand swatches for you guys real quick. It is that non-retractable click pen type of thing. So they are creamy and balmy. I think the outside packaging of the ones with glitter do have like glitter embedded in it. And those just so happen to be the ones that I've tried on my lips. I was really disappointed. I thought that all of them were gonna just be a creamy formula. Number six hits different, which would be a really pretty topper, right? This one was number four going viral number five is link in my bio there is link in my bio there's number 11 in a mood number nine that's major and lastly number three no filter needed and unfortunately the ones that i was the most excited about were the ones that had glitter like they're the ones that ended up having glitter so i was really disappointed and i think that's what's kind of like thrown me off from wanting to do a full video on them but i will be doing swatches here for you guys so you can see what they look like on the lips i hope that my opinion on these change like i really hope that i'm able to put these to use you know let's do number four going viral Viral. You know, this is actually really pretty. Maybe I take it back. So while it is really balmy and glossy, it's still pretty solid. Like it's not the most melty type of glossy balm that I've used. And I actually kind of like that because I feel like it's less goopy. It has a very nice scent to it. Kind of like a sweet scent. Yeah, this is actually really pretty. Oh, maybe I take back my first first impression that I didn't share with you guys. The texture of this really reminds me of the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balms. They seem to be very thick and creamy, but they still give a ton of pigmentation. I just tried the L ones these right here i just tried these and i did a full video on them they're the pout clout lip plumping pens i think that the nyx ones may be less melty yeah they're not as melty they're a little bit more they're a little more stiff which is nice because you can kind of control how much you put on the lips. Why didn't I like this one? I'm like looking at it, I'm like, this is really pretty. It doesn't have a minty feeling to it. It doesn't feel like it has any sort of like plumping to it. It legit feels like a lip balm, which is really nice. No goopiness either. Wait, this is nice. Here is In A Mood. Looks intimidating in the tube right here, but the pigmentation is really nice. It's just slightly more sheer than it is in the tube. So what you see is what you get. 
Let's do that's major. That's wearable. That's beautiful. I actually really like this one. Okay, and now the glitter shades. I think I have two glitter shades. We have no filter needed. Hmm, this one feels a little bit more melty. I wonder if the glitter in it has anything to do with that. It looks shiny on camera, but in person you can definitely see that there's some glitter in there. I think this would be a good lipstick topper, like a lip liner topper type of thing, but I probably wouldn't wear it all over the lips like full pigment. And then lastly, we have Hits Different. Yeah, the glittery ones are definitely more crumbly and melty. So definitely not crazy about the glitter ones, but the creamy ones, really nice. I definitely take back what I first said, like my first first impressions. These are good. But let's try these Anastasia lip velvets. Let's do peach amber first. I'm gonna take a little bit. I kind of want to do like a blurred lip look. Like look how beautiful that is. I like this color too. I kind of like how warm it is. And you can just wear it kind of like diffused like this. Personally, I think it's so beautiful diffused. Like your lips look soft. They look airbrushed, you know? Or you could go full pigmentation. And let's do full pigment here. You do kind of see your lip lines. It is kind of showing those lip lines, like it's not hiding them or anything. But so far I'm not seeing them being exaggerated by the formulation. Okay, here's a full layer of the shade Peach Amber. I still think it looks really beautiful. You can definitely still see that velvety formulation, that velvety texture on the lips. But you do have very strong lines now on the outsides, like versus it looking like it's kind of a soft focus on the lips. It looks soft. It looks beautiful. Definitely feels like a liquid lipstick, like a moussey liquid lipstick. And I think as time goes on, you would kind of see those lip lines, but it doesn't feel drying, you know? Is it transfer proof? Let's test it out. I wouldn't say it's transfer proof, but it doesn't seem like everything is smearing off. Like I still have most of the color on my lips, you know? Yeah, it still comes off a little bit. All right, and let's try the shade Parchment. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm kinda gonna blur it on the lips first. More of a brown red tone, as you can see there. Still really, really pretty. You know what these remind me of? They seem very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury lip blurs, except those I think were more moussey, while these still have that moussey texture, but they seem to dry down a lot faster than those. But here is the shade Parchment with it just blurred on the lips. And then let's do full pigmentation here. All right, here is Parchment. Definitely not an everyday type of shade for myself, but I think that this one would be really pretty if I like wanted to dress up a little bit, look a little bit more glam because it adds that hint of glamour to the makeup but it still seems a little toned down and I think it's because of that finish that blurred finish to it I would highly recommend with these to make sure that your lips are really hydrated though because I do get a little nervous about these like if you can see here you can definitely see a lot more of my lip lines it does seem to stain a little bit so I think that would actually help as it fades throughout the day like you still have that stain actually I like the color of that stain a lot. This is the stain from Parchment and I think it's really pretty. Okay, and lastly for the lip category, I did purchase one of the Hourglass lip liners. They recently came out with these. They're the Shape and Sculpt lip liners and I got the shade number four Uncover. These are really expensive and I was like, I can only justify getting one. It's very nice. I've used it a couple times. It's nice and creamy. I do love how pigmented this is and I think it's a perfect definition type of lip liner for my lips and for my skin tone. It's very, very creamy and it's nice because you can kind of like blend it out but it dries down fairly quickly so that lip liner is on there like I've worn this and it's lasted for hours on the lips they're really good definitely pricey so I can't justify buying like a lot more of them but I am really happy with this purchase I forgot to mention these so I got also these unlock soft matte lipsticks from hourglass and I got the shade sparrow I got fox glove and I got zinnia I totally I totally forgot to mention these. They are in similar package to their Unlock lipsticks that they came out last year. However, this bullet is a matte bullet, whereas the other ones were shiny. This gives you kind of that velvety lip look as well. Not as much as the Anastasia lip velvets though. These still have a little bit of shine to them. And I guess I'll wear one of these. So I think with this look i want to go with the shade sparrow and i'm just going to kind of blot this onto the lips i've only swatched it i haven't put them on for long periods of time oh wow 
that matches really well. So they release these as well as the lip liners at the same time. You can definitely achieve kind of like a blurred lip look with these as well, which I think are really pretty, but it does dry down for the most part very matte. So you do kind of see those lip lines right there, as you can see with the swatch. I think I still, I think I'm still feeling like some gloss formulas more than these, you know? And just cause I take back what I said about these, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna top this with one of the NYX fat oils. I think I'll do this one in the shade number five, link in my bio. Just gonna add a little bit of hydration here. Just a little something, something. Okay, here is the finished face, guys. What do you think? I like everything. I don't feel like the eyeshadow matches the lips and the cheeks, honestly, but you know, this was just for the sake of playing around with new makeup. So let's kind of do mini reviews on everything. Starting off with the foundation, I think it's a really pretty lightweight serum-y foundation. It's nothing that has like blown me away. I think mainly because I'm unsure right now about the shade match, but it's pretty solid. And I think that if you like something that feels really lightweight, such as like a tinted moisturizer, this is gonna be just a step up from a tinted moisturizer. I think it gave me a really pretty base. These concealers, you guys already know how I feel about them. Again, I have full on reviews of both of them. I think they both give coverage very differently. This is way more hydrating. This still feels hydrating, but it definitely gives you a little bit more of a matte natural finish to the skin. I think both have really good shade ranges as well. Summer Fridays lip oil, love it. Again, I have a full video on them. This Dialba first spray serum, I'm still testing it out still getting my thoughts together skincare does take a little bit longer for me but so far it hasn't irritated my skin and it does give me a really nice hydrated base so i like it for that the huda beauty peach pie i like the tone of this i think that it mattifies the skin really nicely i want to play around a little bit more with it to see how it does with even more colors like different blushes bronzers stuff like that but i do prefer the shade for a brightening shade versus the pound cake one and right now the banana bread is a little too dark for me so I think this does the job the Westman Atelier truffle contour stick I think is beautiful it's a very expensive the full size I don't think I will ever buy but I love the way that this blends on the skin I really like the undertone I love how it's versatile enough to use as a bronzer and a contour and it works really nicely with all of my other bronzers and blushes that I've used with it refi lip buff um, it's kind of too harsh I will say for my lips but it does get my lips super super soft the nyx fat lip oil sticks i judged these before i tried all of them i'm not a huge fan of the glitter ones i will stand by that however these more creamy formulations i think are really nice these resemble a lip butter balm much more to me than they do any sort of glossy lip oil stick type of thing i think they feel really nourishing on the lips and they don't feel goopy which is really nice and different when it comes to these glossy balms the hourglass lip liner like i said very very pigmented super creamy creamy going on but it dries down very quick so you have to work fast if you want to blend it out on the lips but because it does dry down I do get a really long wear time from this I would definitely recommend to pick up one maybe two shades that you think you'll use very often because they are super pricey the Anastasia lip velvets for what they are I think they're a great product if you're looking for something that's going to blur the lips if you're looking for something that you can blend out but still have even pigmentation i think they're great they're still going to feel like a matte lipstick i think the longevity is going to be there because of the staining factor of these even with the kiss test most of the pigmentation did stay on the lips the hourglass unlocked soft matte lipsticks i don't know quite yet how i feel about them they are really expensive that's kind of what's turning me off from them but they look really pretty they have really nice tones they slightly emphasize the lip lines but they're not as bad as like the Anastasia lip velvets. So I'm kind of on the fence about these. I really like the finished effect that I have here, but I do kind of feel a little bit of stickiness, a little bit of tackiness, and I'm assuming it's from the stick part of this. So I would first recommend to go in with an eyelid primer before going in with the shadow stick because I have a feeling that this is going to crease within my eyelid crease here. It's hard to get that glitter, but when you get that effect, I think it's really pretty. You definitely have to work with these. I think the stick blends out 
effortlessly though I really like that and if it does have good staying power with or without an eyelid primer I can see myself reaching for those but as far as the stamp goes I think it would be a lot easier to just use them on like the inner corner maybe the brow bone I'm not really sure about all over the face I'm not crazy about the thought of having glitter on my face like that you know but to each their own the well is definitely going to be hard to use but not impossible like you're definitely oh I got a lot more from that. I think you kind of had to just break that barrier and really get in there and get product in order for it to get a lot easier to grab the product. You know what I mean? I don't know how it's going to do as you continue to use this and you start using up a lot of the glitter. All right, guys, I think that was everything for this video. I think those were all the products that I wanted to talk about today. Let me know in the comments down below if you've picked up any of these products or if you're interested in any of them. If you want to see short form videos, of one-off products. I always post those on my Instagram and TikTok, so make sure to follow me there. And other than that, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!